Hey guys, so today we'll be covering the residual income model, which is a method used to value companies that don't pay dividends. But before we begin, I think it's important to actually define what residual income actually means. So at the beginning of any period, the book equity in a firm represents the total amount that stockholders have tied up in the company. The stockholders have a required return on that investment defined as K. So if we were to multiply the book equity of that firm times the required return for that investment, we would get our required earnings per share, also known as our EPS. The residual income is the difference between actual earnings, EPS, and required earnings per share, our EPS. So RI equals EPS minus REPS. Another way to refer to uh, residual income is economic value added, EVA, a financial performance measure based on the difference between a firm's actual earnings and required earnings. So when, you, when the residual income model is used to value a company, you can split the formula into two segments. One, the current book value of the firm, identified as B0, and two, the present value of all future residual earnings, identified as EPS1 minus the current book value times the discount rate divided by one plus the discount rate raised to N, in this case one, the period. And we can actually simplify the formula to be the price equals the book value per share, the current book value per share, plus the residual income in period one, discounted the present value, plus the present value of residual income two, plus the residual income three present value as well. And so by summing up the present value of all future residual earnings, and adding that to the current book value of the firm, we're able to calculate the per share value of that respective stock. However, if we were to make a very important assumption, we can actually simplify this formula even further. So if we were to assume that EPS were to grow at a consistent rate forever, then we can simplify the formula to this. The book, uh, uh, the book value for that company in, in the base year plus EPS in the base year times one plus the growth rate minus the book value in the base year times the discount rate, all divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. An important rule for this formula is that the growth rate cannot be higher or equal to the discount rate because then it would give off a negative valuation of the company, which is inaccurate. So let's look at an example using this formula. ABC Corp pays no dividends. The company recently reported EPS of $1.20 a share and has a book value per share of $5.88. <clears throat> If the growth rate is 9% and the discount rate is 13%, what is this stock worth? Well, first we can identify the key variables provided in the question in the formula that we're going to use. So EPS in the base year is $1.20. The uh, book value per share in the base year is $5.88. The growth rate is 9% and the discount rate is 13%. If we were to input these values into the formula that we talked about in the previous slide, we would get an answer of $19.46 a share. That would be the value of the stock. However, once, and this is really important, usually once you learn about the, um, the RIM model, the next sec section covers the relationship between the RIM model and the dividend discount model. Before we can talk about this relationship, it's important to define what the clean surplus relationship means. It is an accounting relationship in which earnings minus dividends equal the change in book value per share. So, EPS minus dividends in period one equals the change between the book value in period one and the book value in the base year. Now we can isolate for, uh, for the dividend in period one by moving EPS over. And so we have EPS in period one plus the book value in the base year minus the book value in period one. And that is our fundamental clean surplus relationship. If we assume that the CSR, the clean surplus relationship is true, then we can conclude that the RIM, the, uh, the residual income model, is mathematically the same as the constant perpetual growth model. And so we'll illustrate that mathematically here. So let's recall our residual income formula. We can simplify this formula to all include a, a common denominator, K minus G. And now we introduce that CSR, the clean surplus relationship. Dividends in period one equals EPS in period one plus the book value in the base year minus the book value in period one. And so we can substitute the dividends in period one as the numerator for the RIM formula. 
it's the exact same actually you can see so there if we isolate for b and ba the book value and, and the base here minus the book value in the period one the change in that is exactly the same as the book value times the growth rate and so by substituting the the uh, dividend in period one and dividing that by k minus g the discount rate minus the growth rate we get the constant perpetual dividend growth model that i talked about in another video so let's see, look at an example that covers this relationship suppose xyz corp has a current book value of ten dollars and 85 cents a share the most recent earnings per share were two dollars and 96 cents a share and earnings are expected to grow at six percent forever the discount rate is 8.2%. Assume the clean surplus relationship is true. The CSR relationship is true. What is the stock worth? Well, this question has two parts. In section A, there are no dividends. And in section B, there are dividends of $1 a share. So in section A, it's very similar to example one. Where we identify the variables that are provided in the question. So the discount rate is 8.2%. The growth rate is 6%. The book value in base here is $10.85. And the uh, earnings per share is $2.96. Now we input that into the formula we talked about, and we'd get an answer of $113.03 a share. That'd be the fundamental value of the stock. Now in section B, if dividends are paid, then we assume that with the CSR relationship, we assume that the residual income model is equal to the constant perpetual dividend growth model. So all we have to do is use the dividend growth model. So dividends in period one divided by K minus G to get an answer of $48.18 a share. Now you'll see that there is a big difference between the two valuations. In section A, we got an answer of $113 a share. And in section B, we got $48 a share. And there's a big difference between what the residual income model uh, will spew out and what the uh, constant perpetual dividend growth model will produce and that's based on this current question now let's look at our bonus question for today abc corp expects eps of two dollars and fifty six cents a share next year current book value is four dollars and seventy cents a share the appropriate discount rate for abc corp is eleven percent what is a stock worth if earnings grew at three percent forever now this question simply asks you to identify the variables that are necessary to input into the formula, the RIM formula that we talked about in this video. So please comment and share your answers below. If you have any questions, I'll be gladly able to reply to your to comment and hopefully help you out in solving this problem. And please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos. I appreciate the support and hopefully you guys can continue to like my video for more. Thanks guys.